Good morning. Today I'm harvesting my earthworms and earthworm castings. I want to add about a hundred worms to each of my compost piles. I have six compost piles that I want to put the worms in. And I just went out to the hotbed, the composter, and I grabbed the worms and I I brought them in here I've been sorting through them and I wanted to video this and show it to you so let me uh, see if I can focus in I have some worms and I have so the worms are right here here they are they're, they're they don't like the light so they're going underneath of the of the soil that's on there I'm just going to add a little bit of soil on top to keep them away from the light. I think the light actually is painful to a worm. But anyway. But right here, there are two cocoons that I want to show you. So I have my pen here to point with. But this cocoon right here is brown. And this cocoon right here, it has some dirt stuck to it. But it is green. So the green cocoon is a younger cocoon. The brown or reddish brown cocoon is a darker color, obviously, but it's older. So the darker color is older, the lighter color is younger. And it takes, uh, it takes a, a few weeks. I used to know exactly how many days it took for these to, to hatch and harvest, but I don't think it's true how long it takes them to harvest because it depends upon the weather. Because I think if the weather is cold or very dry, the babies will stay in there and the little eggs will wait for the conditions to be right before they can um, hatch and be harvested. So in this pile I have some worms that are pretty small. So this is a, a juvenile worm here. and. Uh, and this is a baby worm right here. See this one here? So this one would be a few weeks old. And that one is... Uh, uh, but these are juveniles. They're not sexually mature. But inside here we have some that are sexually mature. Now, when we talk about sexually maturity of worms, it's interesting because worms have boy parts and girl parts both. One worm will have both parts. So here's a sexually mature worm right there. So this is his mouth right there. And, and then right here is his sex organ right there. From there to there. And then the rest of his tail goes back. But, uh, and this worm's getting away over here. I need to bring him back. So this is pretty awesome. So these are red worms. These are Icenia fedetta. Um, and they're the best composting worm they are, but they're a small worm. Um, Icenia hortensis is a wonderful worm too. They're called European night crawlers. This one here, this Icenia fedetta, they are the common red worm. Uh, if you look up composting worms on the, or just worms, earthworms, on the internet, you will find worms called red wigglers. That's what these are. And they're a good composting worm. So I'm just going to sort through these. I'm going to come adjust the camera again so you can see. See how I'm sorting these guys. But I'm so excited about this. Worms are so good. They're such a good creature. We talk about not tilling the soil, but the fact is we, we want the worms to till the soil all they, all they want. Let's see if I can make that focus super crystal clear. We're going to hope that that's good. Okay. So here we are. Here's a nice worm there. Here's a good one right here. No, this pile right here I've already sorted. And I already filmed it and I already narrated this. And then when I wanted to show you the worm capsules, I saw that it wasn't focused as good as it ought to be. So that's very sad. But here's a worm cocoon right here. 
I'm going to point at it with this pen right here. And it's kind of <coughs> um, green, so it's a young one. And I'm going to leave all of the worm castings and all the baby worms I find in this pile. And then I will just put those in the garden, in the greenhouse. And I'm going to keep the adults and the big ones, the juveniles and the adults. They are going to go into the... Uh, the, the composts to start working the compost and of course they'll lay eggs they'll make they'll lay eggs and we'll have lots of more baby worms in there too which will be wonderful so as I'm taking this apart there's all kinds of worms in here lots and lots of them and the little ones I'm just gonna let them stay in here so this is a sexually mature worm right here right here this guy because he this clotillum on him right there is is uh, it's swollen up so he's ready to be a breeder I don't know if I should call worms he's or she's because they're both so all right there we go and here's this one put him over there and the castings are wonderful so these are pure castings uh, there's no uh, there's no part of this soil in here that hasn't been through a worm. I don't think. I mean, we're we're finding a stick once in a while, like this piece hasn't, but that's insignificant to the amount of of material we're dealing with here. I mean, not, we're talking about 99.9% .9 of this has been through a worm. Okay, I just grabbed my laboratory scoop here. This is what I use to do soil samples. I'm going to very carefully scoop up this, uh, this uh, worm egg. So here's a worm egg right here. So that's one right there. But I just wanted, I scooped it up to show you. Hopefully you can see that right there. And I see another one right here. No, you don't have to scoop these up. There's no purpose in scooping these up other than I'm making this film. So there's that one right there. And I'm being very careful not to smash anything. I don't want to hurt any of these organisms. These are my, these are my best friends. I don't have to till anymore because I've got worms. This is great. So we're just uh, gonna come through here. We're gonna keep looking. Okay, so there were several worms in here, but they were little tiny baby types. See, here's two little baby worms right there. I'm gonna point at them. That one and this one. There they are. So I'm gonna leave them here in this pile. Get you some worms and get you a worm bin. Build you a little box, put it in the garage, raise worms. Don't put food scraps in it though. I see people all the time on YouTube filling their worm bins with food scraps from the kitchen and I don't think it's good for the worms. Worms want something that's a little more decomposed to start eating. I guess if that's all you have to feed them it's okay, but I have seen so many people feed their worms nothing but food scraps and and it, I just, I don't know, I don't like it. I think there is a better way. Let's pull this open and see what we've got. So what do you feed your worms? Feed them leaves from the trees. It's fall right now. There should be an abundance of leaves all over the place. People are probably raking up leaves and putting them in the trash can. It's the biggest waste in the world. I don't know why people would do that. It's because they don't know the value of it. I guess it's not valuable to them in the world we live in. It's not valuable, but it's so sad. It's not a waste product. The soil needs those leaves. Trees bring up minerals and nutrients from very, very deep in the ground because their roots go way down deep and they bring all those minerals to the surface in the form of the leaf that hits the ground. And so why don't we use, you know, utilize that? So we throw away the, the miserable leaves because we don't like them. 
and then we buy fertilizer for, for our yards. It makes no sense to me at all, but most things don't make sense to me. Okay, I'm seeing quite a few worm castings, not castings, worm cocoons, that's what I tried to say. The whole thing is worm castings. Castings is the poop, by the way. So all of this dirt here is worm poop. And the reason I know that is because the pipes that I put in there were hollow when I started. And I filled it up with cow manure on the edges. And then all up above it was different kinds of... Uh, I had lawn clippings from the lawnmower. I had leaves that I raked up out of the yard and I put in here to feed the worms. We had uh, uh, just all kinds of old plant material from the greenhouse. Plant waste went in there. And alfalfa hay bales went in there. Look at this. I'm finding a treasure trove of these guys. I love it. So many of them. So all that stuff went in here. And so as the worms crawled through the bottom of the pipe, they would poop. And then the pipe has filled up. So a 12-inch pipe has filled up with worm poop and now I'm here touching it. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel awesome. I love this. This is the coolest thing in the world. I've read some stuff on some websites and it said never touch worm castings or, or handle earthworms. They're full of bacteria. Uh, that's an interesting argument. I think this has absolutely no disease-causing bacteria in it at all. I'm going to smell it. Almost absolutely no odor at all. Sometimes we smell soil and we think, ooh, that has such a good smell. And if it does have a good soil smell, usually what you're smelling is an organism called actinobacteria, which indicate low oxygen conditions. Not anaerobic, not no oxygen, but low oxygen. Okay, so I'm getting some good worms here. So that's a pretty good pile of worms. I haven't counted these, but once I get a pile about that big, I'm going to dump those into one of my composts. Two more. Here's one. Now as I'm doing this, you've got to remember, I'm barely touching these worms. I'm not smashing them at all. If you smash a worm, you'll kill a worm. If you cut a worm in half, you kill the worm. There's an old wives' tale, and most adults believe it, that if you cut a worm in half, it just makes uh, two worms. I don't think that's true at all. I think it absolutely kills the worm. It destroys him. He needs his organs. You know, we can't cut you in half and have you survive. You need your organs to make life happen. And so do worms. I think somebody made that up who didn't know to make a small child feel bad, stop feeling bad, when they saw a worm get cut in half. Somebody said, oh, it don't hurt them. Sounds like something a, 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 a dad would say to a, a little girl they were fishing and he cut a worm in half and put it on a fishing hook and so he could put two halves on a hook and both halves were wiggling around and they said see it didn't hurt them they're alive it just makes two worms so it's it's not true you cut a worm in half he's dead and if you smash a worm and squish him too hard, he's dead. So, you got to be careful. So if you want some of these worm castings, I'll sell them to you. You can Venmo me some money. Venmo me like 30 bucks. And I will put a, a Ziploc bag full of worm castings together. And I'll ship them to you in the mail. I need your mailing address. I'm not in the business of doing... I don't do this. I don't sell worms and worm castings. But 
if you do want some, just message me when you see this video and say, yeah, I want them. Now, I'm not selling my worms right now, but I am selling these castings. And there's a lot of worms in here. See, here's a worm right here. So there's worms in here, and it's clear full of worm eggs. See, here's another worm egg. I'll point at it. He's right there. So there's a lot of worm eggs. I was on Amazon looking at worms and worm castings and worm tea and all that stuff. And people are selling those. And I think that would be an awesome business to be in. But that's not my business, and I'm not in that business. But these worms here uh, that are in here would give people a pretty good start. And you could just take this. So this little cookie tray here, this is a small cookie tray. This probably has three Ziploc bags full that I would send. So I, I would send like a, it would be like a large, like a one gallon Ziploc bag that's a little bit less than halfway full. And I would want it to be less than halfway full so that there's air in it. So these guys stay alive. These guys need to be alive when you get them. So that's how much I would send for $30. And then shipping it'd probably be six or seven, which, uh, which, because we would just stick it in a, uh, one of those boxes that you get at the post office. So here we go. It's pretty awesome. Pretty fun stuff. So that's, uh, so there we go. So now I'm going to take these worms and I'm going to put them in, uh, a compost bin. So I'm going to move this camera and I'm going to show you how I do that. Okay, so I'm just going to pull this up here. So over there, underneath my workbench, underneath my microscope bench, I have two tubs of compost. Now these are tubs from the big compost that was in the, that were outside. We made the compost on the, on the film. Well, I brought one blue tub of each compost in. And I'm just digging down, I'm just looking here, seeing what I can see. There are some insects in here, and there's quite a bit of white fungus growing in here. So that's good. Now look at that. See that fungal growth right there? That is great. That little white thing in the middle of my hand is fungal growth. So these, these uh, composts are doing pretty good. So I don't want to stir this a lot because it disturbs the compost. But I was just looking to see if there was anything wrong with it. It's been a week since I've checked it and I like to check it. So I've dug down about three inches. I'm going to smell it. It kind of has a good pleasant earth smell, which means there's probably some actinobacteria in it. Okay, I went down about six inches. I'm gonna smell. It smells the very same. Okay, so I'm just gonna put these worms in. All right, they're sticking on there real good. So I'm just pushing them in. Gotta be gentle with them so we don't smash them up. I don't want one injury to happen to these worms. A lot of times we don't worry about that kind of stuff. We just say, ah, they're just worms. But these are not just worms. These are very important farm workers here. Okay. There we go.